The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Cap Steve for Botest.com, and today we're testing the Grady White Marlin 300. This is a classic offshore walk around that combines the advantages of an express fish boat with all of the fishing amenities of a center console. But, unlike a typical center console, the Marlin 300 can also be an overnighter, making this boat very family friendly. Let's take a detailed look. The Marlin 300 measures 30 feet 6 inches length overall with a 10 foot 7 inch beam, which is more than a foot more than many boats in class. She has a hull draft of 23 inches. When the seas get rough, her closed foredeck and protected bridge and high windshield easily shed green water, which makes this boat dry and safe for extended fishing trips offshore. Since the primary mission for the Marlin 300 is offshore fishing, let's start where that activity takes place, right in the cockpit. There's 8 feet 10 inches from bolster to bolster in the cockpit and 6 feet 6 inches from the transom to the bait prep station. That creates plenty of room for two or three anglers to move about and fight fish. The cockpit is 28 inches deep and the extra large bolsters combined with the tow reels add a significant safety factor. There's room to store three rods under the gunnels to each side and four rod holders are in the cap rails. In the aft starboard quarter, we found the recessed freshwater shower wand and shore power connections and the engine freshwater flush attachments. The transom door opens to provide access to the stern platform, which has walking space ahead of the motors. The ladder is a four-step model and there's a grab rail within easy reach. In the aft port quarter, the Marlin 300 has washdown hoses, battery switches, and circuit breakers in their own compartment. On the transom deck, there's a cutting board integrated into the hatch over a storage compartment. The tub inside pulls out and below are the boat's batteries. When it's time to head out to the fishing grounds, bring out the transom bench seat for a comfortable place to sit. With the seat out of the way, it's easy to remove and open the hatches that provide access to the optional Fisher Panda 5 kilowatt generator, pumps, seacock levers, and the water tanks, all within easy reach. And notice how all the levers are clearly marked. Twin latches secure the hatch for the 290 quart insulated fish box in the aft deck. The hatch opens on a stainless steel gas strut and closes on a thick rubber gasket. Overhead, our test boat had the optional six rocket launcher style rod holders on the trailing edge of the hardtop, plus the four rod holders that come standard on the sides of the frame. Grab handles on the back of the helm seats give standing crew members something to hold on to while running to the fishing grounds. Beneath the snap down cushion behind the companion seat, a hinged hatch opens to the 32 gallon raw water live well, has rounded corners, includes full column distribution inlets and an overboard drain. In the step up to the helm deck, we find a small storage compartment that contains an inspection plate and a port light to the mid cabin. Behind the captain's seat, there's another snap-down cushion, this time over the bait prep station, which has a freshwater sink, an insulated bait box that drains overboard, and in the base, tackle storage. Stepping up to the helm deck, our test boat was equipped with the optional command elite vertically and horizontally adjustable chairs for the captain and companion. The backrests are ventilated, the seat swivels, and both bolsters and armrests flip up. Bow seats also include fold-down footrests. In the base of the helm seat, there are three locking drawers. The dash has plenty of space for optional electronics and it's equipped with a Yamaha engine monitoring screen, a compass and accessory switches forward of the stainless steel wheel that's mounted on a tilt base. To starboard, the Yamaha controls, trim tab switches with built-in indicators and remote control for the stereo are all within easy reach. If the Merlin 300 is ordered with the optional bow thruster, the control is installed to port of the wheel. This is a smart location because the captain can work the shifters with his right hand and the thruster with his left. Overhead is the fiberglass hardtop. It has a painted aluminum frame with a storage box to port and radio box to starboard and both lock. It also has storage nets, spreader lights to port and starboard are opening side vents. Standard Stratoglass front and side curtains fill the gap between the top of the windshield and the hardtop which makes this a three season boat. There are two steps up to the walk around side decks. The bulwarks are nine inches tall and the rails atop them are 18 inches tall aft and 25 inches high forward. The side decks are 10 inches wide. The Marlin 300's foredeck is recessed 9 inches, full controls for the windlass are off the deck, and we like the good size hatch to starboard to access the road locker. There are cushions on the trunk cabin, and the center cushion lifts up to uncover the cabin hatch below. Going below, the Merlin 300's cabin has a small galley to port, with a sink with hot and cold running water, an electric stove top on a Corian counter, a microwave, and a refrigerator. The dinette in the bow has a cherry wood table that lowers to convert to a V-berth, to starboard is an enclosed wet head with standing headroom, and there's a crawl-in mid-cabin that has a double berth, an opening port light, and four rod holders above. The 300 has a teak and holly sole, a 6-gallon water heater, and a 32-gallon fresh water tank, all standard. With all of these creature comforts, clearly the boat can be an overnighter. Now let's see how the Marlin 300 performs. 
With an empty weight of 8,221 pounds, three people, 39% fuel and test power on board, we had an estimated test weight of 10,615 pounds. Our test boat was powered with twin 300 horsepower Yamaha V6 4.2 liter four stroke outboards. At 5,900 RPM, we hit a top speed of 50 miles per hour. Best crews came into 3,500 where the boat ran 27.6 miles per hour and got 1.5 miles per gallon, giving the Marlin 300 a range of 390 statute miles with 10% of the boat's 282 gallon fuel capacity held in reserve. In acceleration test, the Merlin 300 planed in 3.3 seconds and ran out to 20 miles per hour in 3.9 seconds and to 30 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds. We tested in one foot chop with winds gusting about 10 miles per hour. Her bottom has a 19.5 degree dead rise at the transom and it carved through the seas with ease. She worked her way through maneuverability tests smoothly and responded to the helm input predictably. The optional bow thruster and twin outboards made our test boat easy to back into any slip. There's a reason why a version of the Marlin 300 has been in the Grady White lineup since 1989. She has something for everyone. A dry, secure, and cozy platform for mom and the kids with overnighting capabilities and lots of room for fishing from the whole boat for even the most aggressive anglers. And that's our look at the Grady White 300 Marlin. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.